what's happening, good fighters. Coming into the all with a whole lot of connection, a whole lot of intention, above all else, a whole hell of a lot of purpose. Dr. Nash, know that. good fighter, Dude. welcome. Let's go. We gotta think of like, what's a short nickname for good fighters? You know, like, um, the good fighter fans, they need a nickname. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, I don't know if anybody's ever, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people listen to the She Slays the Day podcast. She calls them the, sl the She Slayers. So, I mean, she the good slayers. fighters always kind of rolls off the tongue, but no, I, I, I guess it is saying. technically already a nickname in and of itself. But uh, we can we can do better. I could think of. I don't know. We have to dive down. into some thought on that. I mean, if anybody has any good ideas, you know, feel free to yeah. drop it in the chat or wherever uh, <laughs> media you might be listening to. Wherever you can reach out, let us know your us. ideas. Well, then I mean, you can't call people like the GFers like that. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't blow that well. <laughs> Hey, we got to reach into like our intention and purpose today, man. It's a good day. It's what's today? Tuesday. Tuesday. Monday day. But uh, yeah, guys, today we're going to be talking about that third leg. <laughs> and I'm talking about philosophy. Get your mind out of the gutter, y'all. Get your mind out of the gutters, guys. Come on now. That third <laughs> oh, leg. Man. That third leg. Um, I don't know about that third leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. What? Uh, I want to set just a quick intention, Dr. Nash. Um, I found this. I mean, today I'm going to be talking about a lot of, of Palmer's Law of Life. It's one of my favorite books. Um, but in it, and I think this goes for like all good fighters out there, it has this little quick, quick blur on page 18. And it says, I am convinced by replacing negative, destructive, and unwholesome thoughts with constructive, courageous, and helpful thoughts. We can improve health, relationships with others, and chances for success and happiness. Control of the mind is very often control of the causes. So I just thought that'd be Dude. great intention for the good fighters, man. I mean, I don't know how better to say that, really. We could end the show right there, and I think that's pretty solid, you know? <laughs> Dude, if, if, if you get one takeaway from today, that right there is all you need. I mean, no matter what you do, what walk of life you come from, that's just something that in today's society that if literally everybody practice at least one little portion of that right there, we'd be really? better off by, by miles compared to where miles. we're miles. That's fast. That's, um, you know, really just taking time to really pay attention to what you're perceiving, what, what's your, what's, what's your, you know, not just like your physical intake on like nutritionally, but like your mental nutrition. Right. So like, mm -hmm. A lot of people's mental nutrition comes from their screen and their phones and the media. And a lot yeah. of those are specifically designed towards a destructive mindset, yeah. not, 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 not building constructive uh, nutritional mental value. You know what I mean? So, mm. um, it's not a nourishment. We need to be right? nourished. Nourish those, the mentality, physicality, relationships, all nourished. And, you know, just like everything we talk about, dude, it's it's all related. It's all uh, interconnected. So, yep. you know, what you think is what you are. So mm. really getting that mindset right, really uh, paying attention to what your to what your thoughts and uh, your actions become is huge. Huge. And that's why we manifest. And that's why we talk about connection, and intention and purpose like we want. If you can, if you can stay on top of those three each and every day with with everything that you go through, set. Yes, set. sir. So what? So today I'm going to be talking about like two of my probably biggest influences on my chiropractic career has been the Palmer's Law of Life and One Cause One Cure by Fred Barch. So um, those two is what I'm kind of bringing to the table today. Just a few points on like what I found to be like heavy hitters in the chiropractic arena. And then also um, just as like a um, intentionality between why, how I care for patients, you know, like how, not, not just beyond like the adjustments, you know, how I actually communicate and, and everything like that with patients too. Um, what are you touching on today? I know you said, so one thing that uh, I don't know, my, my, my intention for the week has been really listening 
but also with that vision. So, and not just like, I mean, obviously um, there's a whole different, uh, different lenses you can look through for, through that uh, like telescope view from like a million miles out or getting into that microscopic view of like the super finite or super uh, yeah, finite detail of what's happening right in front of you right in a second. So for me, yeah. envisioning and vision is a big intention for myself this week. So mm. I definitely want to yeah. touch on that a little bit. Yeah, I was freaking love that. And I know we were talking about that the other day and how important that is. Um, even like, so I set a weekly and then I actually started doing like a daily thing just to keep in mind. So like today, and you and I were just talking about that certain scenario. And today it was, um, one of my intentions was called be undeniable. Like, what am I putting out? What am I um, sharing? What am I, you know, um, giving that energy that I'm giving off is it undeniable energy or is it energy where it's repelling mm. you know so, so that's that's been a daily intention for today and just um I'm excited for this one and you mm. and I we, we both chat back and forth about philosophy about that third leg <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah never can never forget about the third leg man uh, a lot of people <laughs> like to act like it's not there but uh the third leg is there more than uh probably the other two in my opinion but uh that's true yeah that might be the strongest leg the strongest leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. A lot of work put in. Um, it's not about the size of the leg. It's about how you use it, right? The motion of the ocean, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. Like, when I get into this, this law of life stuff, man, um, BJ really hits on like pretty much every facet of, of chiropractic, I think. And he goes into, and we'll get into what the actual law of life itself is, but I want to talk about why chiropractic was um, conceived because he, he talks about how it was conceived by Didi, obviously, but then developed by him. And he says, um, it's for one ultimate unselfish life buying objective for the sick and the unselfish health selling objective for the chiropractor to get sick people well. And I love that he basically, I mean, he sets a connection, intention, purpose right there. Like within that one sentence, he talks about, first off, it's unselfish. We're not trying to, to, you know, make it all about us. It's, it's about getting sick people well, which we're getting sicker and sicker in this nation. Um, and it kind of shows that trend and why it's so important to have an unselfish mindset within that too. So I just thought that was cool. Good. Um, that's why I was conceived. Uh, yeah, I'm really just kind of letting that digest a little bit because that's just like such a such a prevalent thing that is not just like our personal lives, but people around us all day, every day, yeah. where yeah. people are, are becoming sicker and they're looking for answers in areas that are, they're not taking care of the problems that are making them sick, but they're really looking for answers in areas that just like, you know, push off the, the, the real problem. And, you know, it's like a Hydra, you, you cut off one head and two more pop up. Right. So right. I, I think that's super relevant, dude. Um, one thing I've been, uh, you know, just kind of trying to cultivate myself is my own uncommonness in a way that, uh, you know, when, when I'm trying to be unselfish with what I'm providing, um, mm -hmm. I really want to make want, want that to come across that you know everybody has their own journey and their own path to walk and yeah. there's no one end all be all real solution to your health right so right if you're looking yeah. for that in, in some quick fix pill bottle or one quick fix uh surgery cut something out you know and then that should uh fix you right up and you be a healthy person usually uh nine 99 times out of 100 that's uh that's not the real solution, right? So mm. I definitely think that's super, super powerful, bro. Yeah, dude. That's wild. I think, like, it's so crazy to me that, you know, chiropractic in and of itself is a, is a, I mean, we talked about the science, the art, and we're talking about philosophy now, but it's, it's a profession where we're not focused. I mean, we talk about this later, but about dying inside out, it's not, it's not an, an outward in focus, you know? It's, it's inside. So like uh, in this, he actually talks about like knowing thyself. Um, and we've all heard that type of phrase before, but like, 
But what does like it mean, said, right? Right. What does it mean? And like you said, it's it's getting people to realize their own journey. And I think that's so crucial because so many times, like, patients, we, or, like, just people in general, we try to exemplify, like, hey, like, and I, and I, I want people to do this, too. It's like, I want them to come out, come in with certain goals, but I want them to leave with more goals, like, more goals to, to pursue in their journey. Because totally. if they come in with those certain goals and they leave with those same goals, what did I actually do? What are you working on, right? Like, right. Life's always about a destination, or it's not about the destination, it's the journey, right? So, mm. you know, you might get to that, uh, that check mark, but you always got to have something else down the road to keep, uh, keep working for Cause as soon as you stop working and you become complacent and your health, your finances, your relationships, yeah. you know, whatever, dude. Um, that's when you start dying. That's when you start, uh, you stop yeah. living. So I, I definitely resonate with that dude. Yeah. I like what you said when you start dying, when you, when you think you've made it because, in starting our practices, right? Like they always, I can't remember where I heard this, but it was like, uh, maybe it was Sigafoos actually. He was talking about like, you know, if a chiropractor opened up right next door, like how much harder would you work? How much more would you be learning? How much more would you be talking to your patients? Like, what would you do? What would make you different? What would be your thought process? Totally. And like, I think about, and you're, you're in the same boat too, because you guys have like so many different, um, I mean, maybe not practitioners, but you have other people within the gym there, right? Like, oh yeah, for sure. If a chiro yeah. opened up right next door, what would that look like? Well, and the thing is that uh, that I love about chiropractic is it's so personally applied. So, yeah, and kind of what I was talking about before about being uncommon and really making that your strength. Everybody's uncommon. You know, that's like the that's the message I really want to get across to people is your, your uncommonness, your ability to be unique and, um, you know, not fit into boxes. That's your, that's your power. That's your superpower. Right. So, um, I have my own strengths, my own uniqueness that nobody else has that is, that is tailored to me. And that's my strength to provide for people. So somebody open up right next to me, they're not a clone of me, of you or of chiropractic. It's how chiropractic comes through them and how, how they manifest right. chiropractic. So for them, they are perfect for somebody and they're perfect for a lot of people. And I feel like for me, I provide that same level of, of ability to, to help, you know, with my uniqueness. So one right. thing I found in fame of fortune that I really like was uh, this little, it's probably like a little two paragraph thing that I kind of want to go through. So yeah, the great, the greatest strides in human progress have come from uncommon men and women. You've heard Henry Ford, Steinmeitz, Edison, and many others. Imperative need of today is the leadership of uncommon men and women. We need men and women who cannot be intimidated and who are not concerned with the applause of with the applause meters, who do not sell tomorrow for cheers today, who are not stamp, stampede, stampeded into impetuous action by superficial rumors. The common man has the know-how to become uncommon. If the common man will let the uncommon man use uncommon ways to convert the common man to the uncommon man and let the uncommon man lead him to attain ultimate objectives. Profession is weak or strong. It thrives or perishes upon what is truth. Dang. So. Dang. To me, dude, like that's just, uh, I've always kind of thought that or, you know, not always thought, but I, you, I just always learn and read about so many times in history where somebody's persecuted or ridiculed for their uniqueness and their uncommon ways. And it's just such a competitive way of thinking. And I think with chiropractic, that's one of our strengths, or it should be, is our mm-hmm. cooperation with, our ch- with each other, our community, mm-hmm. ourselves, and our body. It's cooperation, not competitiveness. So, right. you know, spreading life, spreading love. Um, that that's what we do, and that's that's that unselfish healing message. I feel like that we provide that really uh, we tailor to our own our own personalities, like our own. I don't know if you have you ever seen uh, you mean Dupree. Mm-mm. No, so. so you mean Dupree. Uh, Dupree's like a motivational speaker, but he's like kind of down in the dumps and he's been living with one of his best friends who 
at the beginning, his best friend's like, yeah, of course, man, you can come stay with me. And his, his wife is like, oh, I don't know. Like, he's just kind of like really out there, you know, really unique. And then as time goes on, um, his quirks and whatever start to rub off on his wife that she really likes him. And like, he's like a really genuinely good guy. Cause he's like, yeah, that's his thing. He's a motivational, really empathetic person. And through the process, his friend like becomes kind of more annoyed with him because he almost feels like he's competing with him for like, um, almost kind of like love and attention, not like the, uh, like sexual type of love, but just like, yeah, genuine love for somebody who's, who's a good person that his wife's kind of like realizing that Dupree is. And one of his things that he, uh, in his motivational speeches and that like one of his patented things is developing your own ness. So like your gate ness, like what really makes you gates, my own Nash ness. So that really, uh, (laughs) that, that extra flavor of whatever that really makes you, you just focusing on that and uh, cultivating that and not letting people tell you that that's wrong or that that's, that you should uh, tone it down, right? So mm-hmm. I feel like that's something that today a lot of people are really dealing with is that social media is really telling them that like really putting, you know, having them this, self, uh, this false sense of value placed yeah. on what's, what's good and what's not and what's, um, you know, for some people, like that, that's a really good way for them to um, express their uniqueness. But for some people, like, it doesn't correlate. And that's fine. Like, social media is not real. It's not real life. So yeah, um, it, it's a tool, but it's not real life. And not everybody's uniqueness is, uh, it's not, it shouldn't be valued through social media. So I just think that's something that's pretty relevant to our, our generation in particular. No, I like that a lot. And I think it's so fun because we always try to be normal on social media or like we try to, you know, have people perceive us be a certain way um, because we think that they'll like us more or we think that they'll like, it'll be more attractive to them. Right. Um, more digestible, right? Like you almost water yourself yeah. down in a way that like, yeah. Or you what like, kind of like you, you, you round the edges of, of, of yourself that like, so you, you can uh, become more presentable in a way. Right. But then at the end of the day, like you are, you are your less authentic expression. So then, Yep. It's almost like people, we have this like BS meter where like, they're not like probably, you you know, they're not like knowingly unliking you for a certain reason, but they can tell like, that's not your authentic self. Maybe not to like a, uh, like a, you know, to a super conscious arena. Like they know that that's not you. Totally. Um, So you like do all these things to try to be more likable. But at the end of the day, I mean, and you end, you end up not even liking yourself, right? Because, like, you you know you're, uh, I don't want to say a faker, but, like, you know, like, it's not true. Dude, so your bullshit you, meter is better than anybody else's on what, you yeah, put, what you're putting out, you, so. You have to look at the mirror at the end of the day and, and understand what you're putting out. And if you can't do that, not that you might not be doing anything wrong, but it's just, like, it'll weigh on you, man. It'll weigh And I know, like, for myself, I'm a people pleaser by nature. So like I had to learn that big time is just like okay, when do I stop from being like empathetic and nice and, and connecting with people, but then still be myself, not just, not just to go to their vibration, but actually have my own. And if totally. it syncs up, then it syncs up, you know. And being okay when it doesn't—that's the hard part. Is being okay when it doesn't. I think a lot uh, of good fighters could probably resonate with that, dude. I mean, I feel like yeah. a lot of people who are fighting the good fight for for health freedom and um and whatever whatever thing that you really are passionate about that you believe in i think a lot of those people have those same type of problems where you are a people pleaser and i i know i i know i feel that way a lot of the time where um not that like i feel like every conversation like if you feel like you have a good conversation with somebody it's not necessarily you leave the conversation feeling it's good because everybody's both people are happy Right. That's not yeah. necessarily the, the, the determining factor of a good conversation. Yeah. To me, a good conversation is more not if we both feel happy, but if we both, in a way, expressed, you know, our, our own truth in a way that neither of us had to put on a, a mask for the other person. Yeah. And, you know, in a way that to me, that's a good conversation, even if it obviously just dis- in our day and age, it almost feels like anytime you disagree with somebody, it's, 
uh, that's a bad thing. Or like, like you hate it's them. not, it's not, it's not, P- yeah, exactly. It's not PC. It's not a, you know, you, you know, exactly. You hate them. It, it's a conflict. And really that's, that's opposite of the truth, right? Like you're, yeah. you're, you're literally entitled to your own God given opinion. So, yeah. um, I, I just think that that's something that I definitely resonated with for sure, dude. I, yeah. I, I'm always still trying to work on that because it is a fine line. I feel like sometimes where I have this huge empathetic part of me that always wants to, you know, match that person's vibration and get to their level. But in some instances, that's not the best for either of us. So. Dude, I resonate with that a lot, especially when you talk about you, you want to lead the conversation feeling good. So you compromise certain things. Yeah. Uh, And it's funny that you mentioned that quote, because I, there's one in Palmer's law of life that talks about the same guys. Like he talks about, Edison, Morris, Bell, Einstein, and, and he says this. So he says, what a thrill that would have been that we were knowing that we were participant in revolutionizing the labors of forthcoming a new era of mankind. You have this opportunity. You have it now. You who listen to our voice have such, a, such an opportunity pregnant with an even greater potentials than what Newton, Franklin, Darwin, Morris, Bell, Einstein, Edison, or Wright brothers produced because you are tapping into the source of everything. And then it goes further in being a nonconformist. Um, and just like think about like those guys, if they would have been people pleasers or been so empathetic that they gave up on their dreams, like we wouldn't be reading about them anywhere, right? Like, so I don't know. I just want to encourage like all the good fighters out there too. Like if you're suppressing any part of your real authentic self, let that go. Um, I know it's hard, but let that go because – I think one thing that we can all agree on is we want to be great and we want to make an impact and be influential and connect an intentional purpose. But if we're constantly demoting ourselves to purely our, our lesser expressive selves, then we're never going to reach that level and we're going to be more frustrated. Um, and I know that's mostly preaching on myself too. Like I got to tell myself that all the time, you know? Dude, for sure. I, like same as you dude i think we have a lot of similarities in that in that uh that arena um one thing i was not that i was just thinking about it's something that like i don't know i think about it all the time that like unfortunately there are a bunch of people out there that are working to make this world a worse place or in a selfish way that does make the world a not better place and they know it and they they proceed to keep working at that anyway Right. And I would almost argue that in modern society, those people outweigh us in the amount of influence they have and that they don't take a day off trying to better yeah. themselves or better or to, to, you know, opposite of that, to, to impose certain obligations or agendas or whatever, what, what have you. So, you know, if they're not taking a day off, why should I? And working mm-hmm. on bettering myself and bettering my community my household, the people around me and my, my practice. So in a way, that's a way for me to kind of keep myself motivated in a way that like as a good yeah. fighter fighting the good fight, I know the people who are making this world a worse place aren't taking a day off. So yeah. What right do I have to, to sit back and hit cruise, you know? Right. Yeah. That's huge. And especially too, like we, we can so often think that people are, you know, in those positions that are influential actually care about us when they don't. Um, and this, I think a lot of people can consider that to just mean political, but it's not just political. It can be no, political. no. Um, I know Andy there- Fursella talk, talks about this a lot. Is like, because we might be good hearted and we might be empathetic or want a change for the world. We assume that they're the same way. Like we assume that they could do no wrong. I forget what the, there's a certain like psychological type of thing with that, but like be, be careful um, and work towards what you know to be truth and good fight. You know, a fight doesn't, a fight doesn't, um, you know, it, it doesn't end when you just give up, you know, you have to keep fighting and keep fighting. Otherwise you do lose if you give up. So, 
one thing, uh, you know, going off that is, you know, um, not confusing kindness for weakness, right? Like, mm. um, I feel like that's something that is a common misconception about people who are kind or people who yeah. are, um, at least in our profession, people that are really fighting and doing everything they can to help somebody on their path. Mm -hmm. And um, some people really misconstrue that as something as, of a weakness. And I really think that's yeah. an important thing to, to distinct or to make a distinction on that. It isn't a weakness. That's a strength, right? Kindness is a strength. So really, really hone into that and make that uh, really manifest that, you know, mm -hmm. the, the yeah. saying kill, kill them with kindness. I mean, I really do try to live by that a lot of the time and in a way that, um, you know, anybody that has, you know, you, you'll have people that come into, at least I have had people come into the practice that, that are having a bad day or had a bad couple days. And like, I know they're not, it's not a personal thing. So yeah. to really use that kindness as, as a way to like almost stop that, that bad momentum for somebody. And it might not happen right that second, but I was a, like a, a rock against the top for them to where like, there's all this negative momentum through, what they had going on in their personal life through what they have on their phone through what you know what their yeah. what their minds ha telling them to perceive yeah i want to be that rock to really break that wave of that that negative uh it's that, that pattern negative, that negative pattern dude yeah yeah and uh just because i'm kind doesn't make me weak yeah you know what's funny is that so in the bible there's a ton of scriptures a ton of passages that mention this, but it talks about heaping burning coals on your, on your enemy's head. Um, and you know, when I first started reading the Bible and different things, like it, it talked about that. And I was like, Oh yeah. Like you want to crush your enemy with like burning coals. Sounds like some Genesis stuff, bro. Sounds like some like old Testament. I mean, like it's in the old Testament mostly, but, yeah. but when you read into the Jewish, uh, like manuscripts and what, what culturally that meant, it essentially meant just like you said, like kill them with kindness. Like, Treat your enemy so nice that if, if, if they're your enemy and they came over to your house, treat them so much with, with that kindness, respect, um, unselfish, you know, giving that they have no choice but to surrender. Like they have no choice but to not be your enemy anymore because, which is hard to do. Like if they're, if, like, if somebody beat up my wife and then they walk through the door, I would, you know, probably want to kill them too. So like it's totally. one of those things where, doing it on a micro level is difficult, but it's necessary to, to be the change that we want to be. Right. Uh, yeah, man. So. But, um, on that topic though, too, um, BJ kind of talks about in here, the judgment of health and like, what, what is our par, I guess you could say for health, because he discusses how the medical community or just like, people that have it misconstrued is our level of health is compared to others is compared to like, Oh, I'm not as sick as that person. So I'm healthier. Or like this person's sickness is cancer, but mine is, you know, IBS or whatever. You yeah. Compare sicknesses. Whereas if we're trying to be on a certain um, playing ground, like we have to know what par for the health is. And he kind of touches on that in law of life. And that's why I love it too much, so much because like you set the, you set the bar higher, not just the comparative. And that goes for how we treat patients. That goes for how we influence their lives to set the bar higher, not just comparative. Cause then if we yeah. continue to compare, we're going to continue to play a losing battle, which, which you see right now. The only person you should really compare yourself with is yourself. And that, you know, that person is the person you were yesterday. So that's the only comparison yeah. you should really ever make. It was versus yeah. the person who was in your shoes yesterday. So yeah, I think I kind of touched on the first episode that like one of my affirmations is the best version of myself is here today. And, and that's where uh, I get a lot of meaning from that is I'm better than the person I was yesterday and I'm bringing the best version of myself forward every second minute hour every day. So I'm um, just constantly just really trying to, keep that uh that progress on the uptrend um i know i'm not perfect and i know i'm always uh, gonna have something to work on and we kind of touched back on never being complacent always having those goals and having those uh um 
you know, always being on that journey, you know, never reaching yeah. that, that final destination, which we all eventually do. We all have the same destination or transition, in my opinion. Um, yeah. That, every, you know, everybody dies. And I think that's a, a bit of a scary thing for some people to, to think about. But I also think we, ought, we have a bit of an unhealthy relationship with death in our society that um, death's natural. I mean, it's yeah. the yin to the yang. It's, you know, it's, it's balance because there's life where there's life, there's death. And, you know, that's, there's no place more evident of that than, than in the human body, which we talked about last episode with um, the replacement of every cell, tissue, gland, yeah. organ, muscle, bone in the human body every seven years at the very mm-hmm. longest. Um, and our body's constantly doing that. So I don't know. I just think that uh, there's so much to be had with what you just said about. Um, I actually kind of lost my train of thought there. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been in and out of intention. But yes. But with that though, too, like everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Kind of like what you're talking about. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, the old the old. Test- there we go. Sparked. He's back, baby. I'm back. I'm back <laughs> on it. I'm back on it. Yes. Yes. Dude. So good. Um, so in uh, Fame and Fortune, um, he's had a – he said, obviously, he, he, BJ always has, like, just such a way with words that – Yeah. To me, it always just is like, wow. I – I couldn't even feel like I could think about the way you made me feel in a way, but like I, I a hundred percent feel like I embody part of that. So, yeah. Um, this philosopher called Henry Bergson. So he says this mind in itself is aware of everything everywhere without regard to space or time. But the function of our brain is to shut out most of this to us, irrelevant knowledge in the interest of biological efficiency. On the hypothesis, extrasensory or beyond usual or normal perception would represent a leakage into personal consciousness of some of the mental material which educated brain abnormally excludes. Mm. Kind of a lot there, but yeah, it's kind of suggesting that we live in like a continuum cosmic of consciousness, right? Um, yeah. Kind of like a world mind uh, that filters into everybody's brain and that ex- experienced by the owner of that private mind that consciousness um and i think that that's something that you know having perspective is huge i just think that you know going back to the balance of life and death i think that's something Mm -hmm. that perspectively it's okay to come to grips with that that um yeah death isn't the end in a way it's it's a transition and it's a big transition that in a way that transition is kind of scary for a lot of people and some extent it's scary to me too, but, um, yeah, everybody goes through it and we all have the same end of that journey. You yeah. Know? I kind of like what he, I mean, anytime BJ talks about educated versus a, I freaking love it. But, mm-hmm. um, with that, it talk, I mean, innate, I think would in our innate minds, death is, I don't want to say meaningless, but it's, it knows that's the natural way of life. Right. So our innate brain can get on board with that. It doesn't it doesn't um, scare us. But when our educated mind comes in, that's when we kind of like freak out a little bit. I think it's like, okay, well, what what does death mean? Where do I go afterwards? What happens, you know, if I'm, you know, this, that and the other thing like our educated mind gets into that. But then when we think about innate and, and its connection to that, like you said, it's that balance. And when you think about it like that, I think that's a lot more soothing to me is like, okay, it's a natural process. Like it need, it's, it's necessary for, um, it's necessary for that balance that we deal with. Um, and on top of that, like it's, it's a better connection to source. And, you know, especially when I talk about source in my mind being God, like for me, I'm like, you know what, if my innate brain can jive with that and it gets me closer to the source then I, I don't have a problem even though my educated mind's freaking out at the same time i'm like shoot <laughs> oh yeah dude educated loves to you know, scare itself in a way um yeah i was talking with nick lynn the other day and he said something to me that i was like damn dude that was like profound as hell so um there's really only two ways to die 
fun way is to die from a blockage of, of energy or force or, or life. And the other way is destiny. So which way or do you want to die? Or the opposite of that, the release of that energy or that life force. Right. That's wow. Wow. I really liked it, dude. Um, I wrote it down and uh, it's one of my bookmarks for one of my books. So I like that. Yeah. Shoot. He, he did quote it from something, but I don't remember where it was from. So. Yeah. I'll have to hit him up. For sure, dude. He's in Singapore, yeah? Yeah, Singapore, dude. He's been – he opened up his practice in Singapore. He's a – he's done a really good job. He's been working with – so he's, just, he's the treasurer for the Singapore um, – I don't know if it's Chiropractic Federation, Chiropractic Association, but yeah. he's been very involved there. So he's – That's tough. Represents the Especially profession. being fresh out of school, like, that's a big – that's a big time position to be in. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to I have a, Oh, yeah. I don't really have a whole lot of uh, – I mean, I, I've got a little bit of connection to it, but, I mean, there's this chapter in Fame and Fortune called Equality that I really like. Yeah. Um, so – Living is a combination of spiritual, electoral, electoral, wow, no, spiritual, Some electrical, kind of electrical, like your electricity, mechanical, and chemical combinations of motion. So, spiritual because of source, electrical because of spiritual, mechanical because of electrical, and chemical because of mechanical. So, it's pretty easy to get those jumbled up. So, all mechanical motions are because of alternate muscular contractions and relaxations because of alternate flows of mental impulse energy from source from brain to muscles. So alternate flows are directed and controlled by innate con continuity flow through continuity nerve to a continuity of muscular expansions and the peripheries. So without muscles, we have about 650 muscles, right? A human being would fail to move in parts or entirely or entirely. If muscles were removed, we'd just be left with skin, bones, organs, and we'd be lifeless, motionless, because life is motion, dude. And living's a spiritual, electrical, mental impulse, mechanical movement, producing chemical products and byproducts. Each is coordinated, each to each other, and each of which is essential and necessary. So the question he poses at the end, could you educationally produce or reproduce any one or all that make them coordinate together and produce a living being? No. Not and it does. And it does. Yeah. Yeah. Not a freaking chance from educated. Not I just really, chance. I mean, in, in the human body, we're, we have like every chemical, mechanical lever, chemical pump, electrical uh, amp, voltage. Uh, I don't know. Like the human body contains it all. Yeah. Every every modern I don't know, utility. I don't even know if utility is the right word, but uh, uh you could say function, no, I guess. Every yeah, every every function of like engineering, um, plumbing, electricity, chemistry, like it's all done in the human body by innate intelligence, which is um, well that and that that right there goes to show that two things. Ooh. two things first being that innate cannot create be created in a lab we can never create something in a lab that our body can produce better like our body will always produce something better because it knows that natural process and then two when something is out of conjunction with what you just said that's when we get the disease right like yep that's when there's that blockage to the innate flow because something isn't um what what book is it? Oh, it's the book that I just sent you. Um, I think it. I think it was the fight to climb when he talks about uh -huh. minuses and plus. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our body is our body's always functioning. You know, if we have disease, we have to find the find the minus, not the plus, because pathology is always trying to find a plus. Like what is causing what was added to the body to create a pathology? When in reality, there's a minus, and it always comes back to the minus because if you know there's a decrease in flow endocrine wise there's, there's a decrease in flow um 
uh, immune wise, like it comes back to the minus of innate not functioning, not, excuse me, not, not functioning, but like not being able to flow how you just said, because it's all put together. There's just a blockage. There's a minus. Yeah, dude. Um, I mean like a pretty cool way to think about it too. So like if you're working in the yard, so let's say you're like using a plow, raking something, um, you know, you build up callus over time, right? So yeah. that that's a natural adaptation to that stress of that tissue. But you do that same thing with a dead person's hand. There's no callus, right? There's no callus build up. Yeah. There's no stress response. So that's just like a very superficial way to like think about it in my in my eyes. It's like no, that, you break you break dead bones, right? They don't right. They don't have that synthesis to where they grow back stronger or anything like that to that stress. So right actually what you just touched on is a huge reason why i like law of life is because dj talks about how you know we we consistently put money and look for the cure right like we always in in a medical mindset we always look for a cure something something to to place into our bodies to to fix it or to eliminate it (laughs) and he talks about how it if that was truly a cure, then you'd be able, like, you can't put a cure into a dead body that has cancer and cure that cancer. Yep. Like the cure can only be from within because otherwise that, that just, that disease, that disease is not an entity in and of itself. It's just a, a, a decrease in what was the actual function of that, that body. So you can't, you know, I love it when he talks about that because we consistently put money towards different things when it's not the answer. It's, it's misguided. Misguided, you know, for sure. Germ theory versus terrain. You know, you, 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 uh, you tie a rotten apple tightly against a living apple growing on a tree. What's the result? Nothing happens really, right? I mean, yeah. that, that healthy growing apple keeps thriving, expanding, and it uh, keeps just keeps on living. What, right. What's the difference between when you do that to put that same rotten apple in a barrel of apples, right? They're detached and disconnected from the living source, that tree. Mm. So that begins to you just come up with that right now? Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I was about to nah. say, that might be the most fire analogy I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> nah, but like, it, it, but it's powerful because everybody gets that, right? You go to the grocery store and you see that bag of, with a rotten apple in it. You don't want to, you don't want that apple because that's going to spread to the other apples, right? Mm-hmm. Unless you eat them all in one day, but like, that's not the point. Mm-hmm. Um, but you do that same to an apple tied on, tied on, or that's still uh, attached to the stem on that same tree, dude. It's attached to that source. It doesn't matter. That, that's that. Exactly. So, um, but well, wanna... it goes up. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, for everybody that listens to this that's not a chiropractor, like, and especially if you're a, a, another healthcare provider, like, how do you, how do you, um, what, what can you fall under? What topic do you fall under? Do you fall under the one that's always seeking the pathology or do you fall under the one that's always seeking to connect somebody back to the tech, back to the tree? Cause it's not I'm just like, like, maybe it was like a birth and chiropractic thought and, uh, philosophy but it doesn't have to only extend to us you know what i mean but you still need that law of life right those natural laws right exactly that same principle of living resistance it's all it's in everything that's alive dude everything Mm. living growing thriving natural objects like those are the same principles that we that we operate under that we try to empower people with to educate them that like this isn't like some hocus pocus voodoo phenomenon. This is just life. This is this is the process of life. The law, yeah. the law of just life. Like, just like gravity, just like ohms. They all they all are there, but we miss it so many times. We miss it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, dude, I love that apple analogy. I'm gonna start using that on daily now. Yeah, I mean it's. I don't know. I love apples, bro. So uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I grew I like up, I, <laughs> my grandparents had an apple tree. So for me, it's something that like, oh, dude, I like, definitely get that. Um, like an edible one or like crab apple? No, edible. They, uh, we only they had, had a crab apple, apple tree in our backyard. It was the most annoying thing alive. 
having to clean those up in the fall, man. Oh, yeah. No. Tons of dead apples. Why? Because they fell from the tree. The thing is, though, <laughs> uh, I don't know how many times I got stung by wasps because wasps love yes, apples. Yes, they freaking love them. Yeah, they Every go crazy time, over apples. Dude, that was the hardest thing about mowing the lawn because, <laughs> A, you had to avoid all these dead apples because you didn't want, like, apple crap everywhere. But right. then the bees were all over the place, so you had to avoid them, too. Yeah. Mess. <laughs> Clean up your dead apples, folks. Don't yep. leave them to rot. Bees love apples, too, so bees if you're allergic to love bees. Apples. Don't go near them. Yep. I'm trying to think. Oh, um... One thing that I loved in One Cause, One Cure is, and this kind of switched the topics a little bit, but it talks about nothing insignificant, no matter how minute, um, if it alters the nervous system, it's significant, you know? And I think like, that can be, that can be positive or negative, you know? For like sure. If you think about something as simple and minute as a hug. And its positive impact on the on the nervous system is significant, even though it's such a small thing. It it has such a big impact that we should place it to high regard. In the same way, too, like if I drink a soda, or um, you know, if I pick an object up wrong, like that's going to impact my nervous system poorly. Totally. And to yeah. to hold that in high regard, everything, you know. The little things are the big things. My coach always used to say the little things are the big things. And that's, I mean, I feel like life's a bunch of little things that add up together. You know, you, you, I mean, it always comes back around to it's as simple as that, right? Like, uh, right. you know, a, a slip on the sidewalk, that's a little thing. You know, you, you fall and land on your butt, that's a little thing. Mm. A, a little subluxation in, in your cervical spine, that's a little thing. But a reduction in nerve flow, that's a big thing. For that man right. right and that man living disconnected around his family that's a big thing for that family yeah and that family living disconnected in that community that's a big thing for that community that yeah. community living disconnected to that state that city that county that's a big thing to that city that state that county and yeah. it's just like it's very uh connected right like a, a disconnected society full of disconnected people i mean they could all happen from a bunch of little things. So um, little things add up and it's, uh, it's not something to just brush off is like, Oh, it's just like a little bit of neck pain or it's just a little bit of indigestion or just a little bit of allergic response to something I'm eating or just a little bit of bad thoughts that I'm having this day against yeah. these people. Um, just you a little address, bit of address it. Yeah, and it's just a little bit of uh, toxic habits that I'm that I, that I keep that I keep having in my lifestyle, right? Like, yeah. um, nobody's perfect, but you should be Bring constantly trying. Yeah, elevate yourself, right? Like, yeah. Well, that's why it's so important too to be able to connect with yourself, because if you can't if you can't connect with yourself enough to address all those, then you're never. It's just gonna pass you by. I mean, uh, we talk a lot about being awake and asleep, right? And uh, mm. being connected to self is a form of being awake because when you're asleep, you're not connected. You're, you're not uh, able to perceive little things happening, little, uh, little things you're doing to those, those, those that are close to you or those that you love. And um, I don't know, being asleep to those problems really, uh, I mean, there's no – greater disservice to yourself and your family and your friends, right. in my opinion. Yeah, no, I like that. Huge impact. Um, man, I feel like I could talk about this forever, to be honest. For sure. I've got, I've got, uh, so in, I guess that is fame and fortune. So, <laughs> I want to try to add some uh, variable content, you know? <laughs> Always good. So I guess uh, th this little section is called constants. So um, this ease 
is one or more types of abnormal variables from innate function constant, which being interfered with deviating from normal, func normal natural free flow produces one or more functional variables here or there in varying locations and degrees according to unit of time it takes to unbuild constant to build variables. So educated man concocts endless external variables to give to internal living man, his variable external treatment to modify, amend, change, direct, or control internal sick variables to regenerate, rehabilitate, rejuvenate, or restore constant of health. He thinks by adding more external variables to the already existing internal sick variables, he can create or artificially produce a complex constant. Multiplying variables never has, cannot, and will not produce a simple single constant of health. Only internal innate, which is the only constant, can restore that internal constant. And I think that's something that anybody that has ever had like a math course of algebra or above, like the more variables you add into an equation or anybody with a scientific mind, you're going to exponentially impact the ability to have a, a constant outcome or really even figure out what the actual problem is, right? And I yeah. feel like for us, that's what we operate in, dude. We operate in figuring out your constant. And if you get your constant set and you still have problems, then you can start taking a look at some variables, right? That's when we start looking at diet. That's when we start looking at, you know, what yeah. you're doing for movement, what you're, what you're thinking about. Those are the important variables. Mm. Not adding some substance to, to counteract with your, with your constant right away, right. in my opinion. No, I agree. I definitely think like we, we saw sometimes we try to add before we subtract. Right? Exactly. Like, yep. What we automatically run to, and I see this so many times, man. Like I always get questions like, what should I do for this? What should I do for that? What should I take for this? What should I take for that? And I'm like, dude, like I'm never going to just tell you to take or do something without addressing something first that needs to be removed. Like first and foremost, if you if you are automatically looking for some magic herb medication surgery to fix up your life that doesn't exist, ever, never so will. Always, huh? And it never will. Yeah, it never will because a. I feel like I have a lot of two pointers in this uh, podcast, dude. <laughs> it's a duality, man. Duality. That, hey. That's that's the the topic of the episode today. Duality. Duality. Um. Like you always, you always need to bring it back to, okay, what's causing me. And I think we talked about this a while back. First, you have to remove Well, we talk about, remove stressors always first, yeah. remove whatever's placing stress on that nervous system, remove yourself from in the environment. Cause if you try to heal within the same environment, it's not going to happen either internal or external, it doesn't really matter, but because if you can't perceive it properly, which you haven't up until that point, you have to remove something that's causing you to not perceive it. Totally. I don't man. know, man. People, people run to the next best supplement and it pisses me off. For sure. And a lot of yeah, the supplements yeah. are repackaged, re renamed, rebranded, but they're the same time old story, same thing. That like Same filler, crap filled, you know, you might as well just be eating freaking cellulose ridden trash. Yeah. Honestly. I mean, um, I really like that story you sent me about Thomas H story. Dude. Okay. We need to do, <laughs> we need to do like a whole podcast on that one because that thing, that was the wildest story I'd ever heard or ever read. Yeah. Especially coming from, I mean, our background uh, and knowing what we know or like in the way that we understand the human body, that was like a very like, I don't know, not scary, but like, damn, uh, this dude got hit by a car and like just in the blink of an instant, like this man disappeared off the face of the earth, literally, mentally, disconnected. yes, just and checked out, man, forgot who and what he was, his family, all this, dude. That was wild yeah. story. Wild um, story. If you need to read up in between this episode and that, an episode where we talk about just Thomas' story, it's in Fight to Climb. Um, yeah. Dude, I was reading that, and I was just like, oh, what? Jaw kept dropping bigger and bigger <laughs> with each page. I'm like, okay, the story can't get any crazier from here. No, Next it doesn't. Enough. 
it's almost like too because they touch on like the folklore aspect of it also which was funny yeah and then they bring it back around to like and this is like what like it was like the conservative view of it and then it was like the more like uh, expanded like uh, folklore style so it was really funny like in both of them and just a wild story overall and I think there's something to that, though, you know, going with, like, folklore and just, uh, I don't know, just, like, historical, timeless stories in general, that there is always some essence of truth in those stories. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I feel like a lot of, I feel like sometimes people really just like, oh, that's just a story. I'm like, well, there's always some sort of message in, in a lot of these stories. Like, there is a lot of, usually some sort of truth to it. And, yeah, like, stories do get distorted and know from you know the passage of one person to the next if you ever played the game telephone you know that more than right i mean it's like a great great lesson but still um there's always some essence of truth to it so i love the folklore aspect of it where it's just like not like a paul bunyan style but it was like uh <laughs> dude yeah he became like a um the, i don't even know but the disconnect that he probably did feel is a disconnect that a lot of people deal with today yeah, not necessarily in like his is because he got in an accident, but they deal with disconnects all the time. Totally. At its at its core, when we're disconnected, we are not ourselves ever. You know, so I mean, like you said, uh, that, and that's like the most basic breakdown you can get disconnection. He was not himself. Yeah, he was asleep. Asleep. The right. What do you say? The this part of my head was not on for the, the right side of his, yeah. The right side of my brain was not on. Yeah. Wow. So we will do a particular was... episode on Thomas story. Man. I'd love it. I need to find out more about that too. Yeah. The actual... Sit down and read it to people. <laughs> well, cause at the end, right? Like his family ends up moving there. Yeah. And then he has another practice out and out. Like it was a dude, wackiest thing. Like, yeah. But props to him. So when he did get connected, he was so connected that he knew that he should not. I mean, it's kind of weird, but like, I totally understand. He could not travel back to his family because he was afraid of disconnecting in between that time. So he had to be within that, that length of a chiropractor. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that you're, he, you're 100% right. Wild. And for me, I mean... I'm living with one, so I, in a way, I, I relate to Thomas' story. <laughs> well, you know what's Take funny is when, um, like, when we were first putting together practice, I was reading through, I was reading through Law of Life, and BJ talks about how um, if we're, if we have a subluxation, right, we're that much closer to death, or, like, we're that much closer to, we're not in full of expression of life. However, when our nervous system is clear, like we're more um, closer to life. And so then I posed this question to him. I was like, so like, wouldn't it be more beneficial to always remove a subluxation because we see patients, you know, sometimes we create these care plans that are based on, you know, one time a month, two times a month or whatever. But during that time, like, could that patient technically be more closer to death because they have a subluxation in between that time period? And it was just a question I brought up because I, I, it fascinated me in the sense of like, I want to be ac- I want to be accessible to my patients to the fact where like they get so in tune with their body that they're able to be like, yeah, I got a subluxation. I need it fixed. Um, cause I feel like not that they feel like they're like in death, but like to be more connected. So if yep. we're constant, if we're consistently like pushed to that point where like, we feel like we're not where we should be, I don't know. For me, that was like, dang, I need to get adjusted more. And I get adjusted pretty rich. <laughs> well, and, you know, whatever your lifestyle is, I mean, understanding the amount of stress you have. Mm, and it really, t- Yeah. And just really being able to be in tune with uh, your own stress levels, dude. I mean. Yeah. That was the biggest thing because I got a couple of people that, like, run businesses that come in here. And I was like, listen, like, you need to tell me if it's been a stressful week. Like, you need to tell me if, like, you're dealing with emotion. And I tell all my patients that, too. I was like, 
if it's if it's been an emotional week, a stressful week, or like you just went ham on deep dish pizzas, like you need to tell me because there's no insignificant stress on the nervous system, right? Dude, that's very profound, bro. I need to start. I, I love that. I'm gonna start doing that because yes. in a way, um, I do it. In a, I I mean, I'd never put it in those words though. I I definitely love that. And uh, speaking of going ham on deep dish pizza, it is National Pizza Day. I don't know if you knew that. Oh shoot. Well, so, have to go ahead, hey, right? That's what I'm saying. So uh I'll just get adjusted right after that. I'll probably feel like trash, man. I haven't had a pizza in so long. That's not true. I haven't had a, a deep dish, like regular deep dish pizza in so long. For sure. I, I guess I though. haven't. I've never really had a legitimate one. Uh never really been to Sh- I mean, like I have, you know what I mean? Like, but I've never been to like Chicago and gone to like uh Lou Malnati's or like uh Bro. Or like, uh, what's the other one? You never had like um, Gino's East, man. Yeah, I've never had Gino's. I've never had like Giord- Giordano's, really. Bro, close up the office. I'm out here. I'm out here asleep. Drive out to the Chicago. <laughs> I'm out here asleep to the pizza world. Holy crap! Somebody bro. wake me up. Dude, all right. Me. How wake far up, is Chicago dude. from you? Mm. Five hours. Probably, probably six. Dude, we're going to go get some Gino's East, man. First of all, Gino's East is better than any pizza place. Y'all from Chicago that want to find me, find me, because it's true. Hey, I'll jump on your team, Gates. I don't know what I'm fighting for, but I'll fight, I'll fight for you no matter what. Good fighter. Good fighter's rule. You can only eat Gino's East pizza. Giordano's right. and <laughs> – They say no plug. We're not sponsored, but we'd love to be. You know, we'd love to be. Gino's East, we're plugging you right now. Well, again, you, I expect pizza delivery to my door each month. Well, I mean, I've just <laughs> never had it. So, you know, if you guys do, like, uh, those, those frozen deals where you can deliver that, you know, let me know. Dude, they, do have, they do have frozen pizza, though. It actually is pretty solid. I found some at Aldi, actually, in Davenport one time, and I got, like, four of them. What? Yeah. I scooped Honestly, them up really though, quick. the Aldi in Davenport had some fire because I've they, gone to the one here, and I'm looking for the same stuff. I'm like, dude, y'all, you, you guys don't got the beer-battered beer battered, uh, fried cod? In the front <laughs> section? Oh, dang. Like, that was, like, what was getting me through school sometimes. Real, dude? I've never seen you eat that. Oh, my gosh. Dude, yeah. I'll do buy And we lived right next to it, right? So, like, it was tempting. So, when they got those Gino's right pizza, I, ordered, I, I got a lot of them. So, but, um, yeah, all these fine, bro. I wish – yeah, the one by us is, like, okay. Sorry. Anyways, I got to hop on my other call here, but – yeah. yeah. All right, good fighters. Um, well, hold up. Oh, okay. Well, your final thought before you leave your final thought because I want you to end it. Okay, T-O-T-T, always. So it says, I foresee a world free of drugs and addiction where surgery is minimal and health is the rule rather than the exception. That's what I want. You want me to follow that up? (laughs) Come on, bro. Oh, that up, baby. <laughs> all right. I want the rule, man. not the exception. All right, all right. So I guess uh, above all else, man. Uh, I guess. I think your mic died, said, bro. Oh, mine did. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh wow. It's just a little so quieter. You... No, not. I think it died. That's why it's like it's super quiet. It like dimmed down. But I can hear you from your laptop, though, I think. No. You're mute. Oh, I think you're muted there for a second. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, final, mm-hmm. final THOT for me is uh, really uh, – hmm. Man, it's really hard to follow that up, Gates. Come on, bro. Um, <laughs> I guess I should have gotten – I thought you were going to bring something out, so I was ready for it. Dude, dude, something. I guess I – I mean, I got some stuff. Just give me one second to at least, like, <laughs> not just fall flat on my face with that. Guy. <laughs> Goodness. Um, so, for – I don't know. I, I guess my, my big thing to, to end on for all the listeners and anybody watching this is uh, really, really make a – a priority for yourself and hold yourself accountable to go out this week and really um, make, have a vision set in place and an intention to uh, make steps towards that vision. You know, whether that, whether you're a chiropractor, chiropractic student, have some sort of vision for the week to how you're going to better yourself for your, you know, better yourself first and foremost, how are you going to make yourself 
a better manifestation of you in any in a unique way. It'd be uncommon and not put yourself in a box. Because I Boom. think at the end of the day, that was an awesome message. Boom. Uncommon. I love uncommon. it. Uncommon. 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 Don't be, be the bad apple. Be the ba- the apple attached to the tree, baby. Yeah, connect to that source. Dig those yes, roots sir. deep. Yes, sir. Strong trees don't blow over, you know? <laughs> With that, y'all, connection, intention, purpose, baby. We have had a fire episode, man. Episode four coming at you. Guys, episode Watch five, we're going to be pushing some Friday freaking fire. And then after that, I think we're hitting Dr. Lay having, having her on here. So um, with that, guys, we love y'all good fighters. Keep fighting that good fight. It's been a pleasure. Till next time. Choose your destiny.